Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Barry Beckham. I do have quite a number of videos on the subject of animation for PTE AV Studio and its previous version, PTE 9. They're worth viewing because the fundamentals of animation haven't changed. A recent PTE Studio video that you may find useful is one I called What are Keyframes? because it's keyframes that control all animation from basic to complex. I'll link to that video below. The basics of animation is fairly straightforward. A question we may ask ourselves though is what are we looking to achieve with basic animation? Why do we want to include it? Well I'm going to be looking for some very delicate pans and zooms. Why? Well, it relieves the static nature of a still image audio visual. The speed of the animation in any presentation we make is very important. What controls the speed of animation is two things. The length of time we allow for the animation to take place, and in our video here, that's likely to be the slide duration that we can see on the bottom right corner of each of these thumbnails. But it's also the amount of the movement we apply. For example, if we have an image rotating 360 degrees over a 20 second slide duration, the speed of that revolution is determined by the 20 second slide duration we applied to that particular image. If we reduce the slide duration to 5 seconds, the speed of the rotation has to be much faster, and that may not be appropriate. Here we are in the main screen of PTE Studio, which is generally referred to as the slide list. What I'm going to do is to select the first of my little test images here, hold the shift and select the last, then I can drag them all down into the slide list below. We don't have to animate every single image. That's part of the creative process. I'm going to leave the first one static. I'm going to move to the second slide in this little test sequence, select it, and open the Objects and Animation screen. You'll notice that the first keyframe has been created automatically, but for any animation, especially basic animation like this, we're going to need two keyframes. There's a number of ways we can create them, but let's keep things simple here. If we just right click over this one here, we can just choose to add a keyframe. There is a shortcut key, it's the insert button on the keyboard. Now when I click to insert that keyframe, it puts it nicely at the far end, just where we need it. So with this image, let's just apply a gentle zoom. So we've got two keyframes here. The one on the right is going to determine where the image is, in our case what size the image is in zoom factor, at the end of the zoom. The keyframe on the left will determine where the image is at the start. Well, assuming that we're going to zoom into this image, we don't need to make any changes with the keyframe where the cursor is currently. I need to move to the one on the far right, select it, go to the zoom, and I can either tick the box and click and drag over the X or the Y to make the image larger or smaller, or I can pick up the corner toggles and do that from here. And that's all we need to do to zoom into this image. Let me put my cursor back at the start, and we can press play. And there it is, a very simple and delicate zoom. Now one of the things you may have noticed is that we didn't have to put a great deal of zoom into this image to create the animation effect you've just seen. 
if we look up at the zoom factor boxes on the top right, we can see it's close to 120%. But of course we started at 100%, so we've only had to zoom 20%. Sometimes I find it useful to just over type these values. It can be quite useful because if 120% works well here, then it's very likely to work well with some of the other images. Let's take a look. So recalling those thumbnails back in the slide list, I didn't animate the first image. We've animated the second image Let's skip the next image and animate the one after that. One of the ways we can do that is to go up to the little arrows at the top right of the screen. And if I click once, we can move on to the next image. So let's assume for a moment we're going to leave this image as it is. Let's click again and we can move on to this image. And here, how about if we zoom out? So we're going to need to have another keyframe. And a nice quick way is to use that keyboard shortcut touching the insert key. So what I'd need to do here, if I wanted my animation to be about the same as the previous, then I'd need to go to my first keyframe and put the 120% there, because this time we're going to start with the image bigger and we're going to zoom out. So I'm going to select the keyframe we can go up to the top right and we can overtype the value or we can drag out the bounding box, it's just personal preference, or use the X or Y key, click and drag to adjust to the size you want. Once I've done that, I'm going to go back down to the start and with that first keyframe selected, I'm going to press play. A strange thing is going to happen, well, in fact, nothing's going to happen at all. Let me show you why, because you're almost certain to fall into this trap once or twice yourself. If we go to the second keyframe and we highlight it, if we look up at the options we have on the right hand side, you can see that the zoom is turned off. So what we've effectively done here is to say, zoom the image to start, but don't do nothing through the rest of the animation. All we need to do to fix this, tick the box. Go back to that first keyframe, press play. Now we've got that delicate zoom outwards. So as we come back into the main screen of AV Studio, we know that we've animated the second image in our sequence and we've zoomed in. And we've also animated the fourth image in our sequence where we've zoomed out. So let's take the next one in line, the one I've got highlighted here. Open up the objects and animation screen and take a look at a pan from left to right. So once we've got the image opened up into the objects and animation screen, we do need to create another keyframe. Now touching that inset key is quite a quick and easy way to do that, so we'll start there. But when you think about it, even though we're going to pan the image left to right, we need to zoom the image to create space from the left to the right. And to do that, we need to go to our keyframe on the left. So if I select my keyframe, what I'm going to do is to use the same values in the zoom that I've already used because they seem to work okay last time, so let's try them this time. If I move up to my zoom options up at the top right, this time I think I'll do the same as before. I'll just highlight the value and overtype it with 120. Now you can see exactly how much space we have left and right of the image. So if the keyframe on the left is highlighted, the image needs to be moved to the left because that's the starting point. We can click and drag over the X here. You can put your cursor into the box and hit the up and down arrows to do this, or you can just click and drag. There we have the starting point of the pan from left to right. 
So now we need to go down to the keyframe at the bottom right and select it. Back up to the pan controls because if I tick the box, all I need to do here, I'll do this in a slightly different way. I'm going to click and drag over the X to move the image to the right. And if we go down to the bottom left and select the starting point, we can have a preview of the pan from left to right. Now I suppose one question we could ask here is how do we know that the pan we've just created isn't too fast when we see this in amongst the other images in a full screen slideshow? Well the honest answer is we're not entirely sure until we get the soundtrack attached. But if we then found that the pan was just slightly too fast, well we've got two options. One of those is to increase the slide duration, in other words, give more than the seven seconds we have here for the pan to take place. Or we can just reduce the amount of the pan. Now I could do that from either of these keyframes and the one that I choose is going to be purely personal. So if I select the first one, we see the starting point. But when the pan starts, we can't see these trees here. So what we could do is say, well, let's have the pan starting a little further to the right. So if we do go back up to the pan X, what we could do here is just move the pan slightly and have it start from, let's say, that position. And that is going to be very marginally slower than we saw just a few seconds ago. And often that's all it takes. You'll notice that PTE AV Studio does provide automatic animation in the form of slide styles. But we will get more from those if we first understand the basics of animation. Now there's not a great deal more I can add to the subject of basic animation. But basic seems to suggest there's lots more to come. Well there could be, but here's the thing. Quite often in a more traditional audio visual presentation, these basic gentle pans and zooms are just about perfect for our needs. Sometimes we may even want less and slower movement. We'll find that we don't need very much animation at all to relieve the static nature of still image audio visual. Take a look at the video on keyframes that I mentioned earlier. That will add quite a bit to what we've done here. A couple of reminders before I go. A Mac version of PTE AV Studio is going to be available either in December 2020 or early 2021. It's already under test and a stable version is being used already by many Mac users. All my videos can be downloaded from my website for convenience. If you think they're worth it, a small donation towards my costs would be gratefully received. I'm not sponsored in any way. See you next time.